Thank you. How about now? Is that better? <laughs> that better? Yep. Awesome. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be the first live stream that I've done if I didn't have something like that happen. If I didn't have something like that happen. So thank you uh, for calling that one out after I just did all that. Anyway, my name is Brian Coddington, and I'll do that again here with my little lower third. I'm the video designer here with Libsyn, and uh, today we'll be talking about audio editing for your podcast. So uh, I had a whole bunch of stuff I already had planned to say, but sure enough, let's just jump right into it. If you haven't already done so, be sure to check out our channel and like and subscribe and do all the fun things there. It really does help us out uh, in growing this channel. Uh, what we'll be covering today is really audio editing for your podcast. It's something that I think a lot of people kind of get uh, a little stressed out about. You know, you spend all this time kind of like recording this really amazing podcast and you're left with an hour to two hour or three hour, depending on what type of interview you have, monster that you have to go ahead and chop together. So my hope is that when you come out of this session today that you have a little bit of knowledge and confidence to really direct towards your podcast. Now, I'm a newer face around here. Uh, if you haven't seen me before, I was in one video that uh, dropped under our one, under 100 series, but uh, I'm actually a, a Libsyn customer. I've been Lib Libsyn since 2016 with my own podcast. So if you're new to podcasting, I've been where you're at. And uh, my podcast is a movie review podcast uh, and slash comedy. It's called the Cinema Psycho Show. I hope that some of the listeners have been throwing some stuff out to them that they come into this live chat too. Um, so that's my background. I'm a podcaster and filmmaker and educator. I've taught podcasting uh, to at, at college level. So I, I, I hope that I know a little bit about this sort of medium. Um, and with that said, what I do want to direct is just like in any classroom session, if you have a question at all during this uh, stream, because of the nature of this, it's very much, I want it to be very open-ended. So if you have a question at all about any of the processes that I'm gonna be going over, go to that chat right in the corner there and type it in there. We've got some people here from our team who will be answering some questions and I'll pull some in as we go and answer them as you go through. One thing I do ask is that you do type a Q and a colon so that I can identify it on my end, all right? So with that said, let's talk a little bit about editing. Everyone loves editing, right? I don't think anyone here really loves editing. If you really love editing, that's great. Most people I know who I meet, they kind of view it as like that monster that they don't want to deal with. They love the the actual recording part, right? That that time you get to sit down with your guest and, you know, really have that intimate conversation. But the editing part, you're just like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. I don't know. That's, that's going to take so, so much long of a time. Um, but it's something that's absolutely necessary. So it's something that I think a lot of people have apprehension over. They kind of get anxiety over. They don't know what particular DAW to do to use. And on top of that, you know, if you're kind of uh, leery about technology to begin with, if you open up a DAW and you've never opened it up before, it can be overwhelming. So we're going to try to tackle that today. Okay. Now I do want to preface this. Editing is very personal, okay? Uh, the tools I'm using are tools that I generally like to use in the nearly 240 episodes of my podcast that I've produced, and the techniques that I'm using are personal too. That isn't to say, and I bring this up because a lot of people have their own workflow, and every workflow that you use is perfectly fine. That isn't to say that my workflow is the best. It's what works for me. So, my hope is not necessarily that you copy everything I do and kind of say, well, if Brian says it, then it must be doctrine. That's not the case at all. You know, I might throw in, say, a compressor at a, a different part in the, the editing chain than you might. But the point I'm trying to get across is that no matter how you edit, the important thing for me is that you do edit. Okay. So let's jump over and kind of overview what we'll be talking about today. Okay. So first off, some of the things we'll be discussing are mainly the differences between contextual versus technical editing, okay? Uh, very different tracks and very different mindsets that you want to be in when you're approaching both of those techniques. So we'll be looking at that, the differences between the two. We'll also be looking at how to work with remote recordings, 
Okay, so depending on kind of how you record your podcast, you might be using something like Squadcast or CleanFeed, and this is going to be kind of geared towards you folks. Now, this isn't to say that the editing that you that I'm going to be talking about is only working with remote recordings. You absolutely can apply this to in-person recordings. Okay, and you actually have a little less hurdles to go over with in-person recordings. But since we're still kind of in a pandemic and most of you might be recording remotely, it's worth talking about how to actually take those remote recording, remote recordings, excuse me, and edit them together. Okay. Uh, on top of that, we'll be looking at the first process to take your voice through, which is repair and cleanup of your audio. Unless you're recording in a nice studio setting where you've got nice sound treatment and you know you've got the best mics, my guess is you're probably recording in a space like I am where it's maybe your home office and maybe you don't have everything perfect. Okay. So the point is, is that we want to do those repair processes first before we actually tackle more of that enhancement and, and, and really making your voice sound as buttery smooth as possible. So with that said, let me see. Can, people can still hear, still hear me. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I always have to check now. So with that said, let's talk about enhancing your voice with EQ and compression. Certain two things that I think some people kind of fear. They fear the EQ, fear how that works, and and especially compression. And if you've never played around with them, it can be really easy to kind of overdo it. So we're going to look at how to do proper EQ and compression. And and also how you can really, you know, Real, really enhance your audio the best it possibly can uh, with EQ and compression. And let's see what else. We'll be also looking at some very basic episode editing tips in what is referred to as the multi-track in Adobe Audition. So I'm going to be basically taking you through a very uh, typical edit for me through how I edit an episode and some things you can do to really help your episode uh, really grab your audience at the beginning. And that's by using a teaser from your show. Uh, on, oh, I got rid of that one there. There we go. And the last thing we'll be looking at is, is definitely exporting for optimal loudness. Okay, optimal loudness might be something that you're not necessarily familiar with. And you might be thinking, well, I'll just raise the, vo the volume up and that's good. But the truth is, is that unless you want your audience to kind of be riding their volume slider or their volume buttons on their devices, you want to make sure that your audio is leveled to a proper loudness level so that depending on whatever device it's being sent to, whatever podcast, uh, podcast you're using, that you can uh, listen to it and it won't be necessarily something you have to ride the levels at. So we're looking at how to set your audio, your audio, edit, edit up, excuse me, for proper loudness standards. Okay. Uh, now, one thing uh, I did want to talk about first is really, you know, the idea that editing starts at the editing stage when honestly, editing should start at the production stage it should start when you actually begin producing your show. Okay. And these are some tips that I definitely want to talk about. I'm not going to spend too much time on them, but they're things that you should do when you are recording your episode so that you save yourself some sanity when you get into your DAW. Okay. And this is really important stuff here, really stuff that you want to make sure. So let me go grab my, my little slide here today. Yeah, I'm not nervous at all. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so I call this save yourself from the fix it in post mentality. Okay, now I have a little bit of, of, of uh, insight in this. So what I generally do is I work in video production. And one thing that you always hear on set is we'll fix it in post. That's the worst thing to hear on set is we'll fix it in post. Because a lot of times things that could have been solved on set or in the, you know, when talking about podcasting, during that production stage would have saved you so many hours of aggravation in front of uh, a DAW. Okay. So some things to keep in mind. Okay. And these are very basic things that you want to keep in mind when you are actually recording. So you're not driving yourself crazy 
as you're editing. Okay, the first one is your mic choice. Okay, now when I'm talking about mic choice, I'm not talking necessarily about particular companies. You know, if you got a Rode or a Shure or a Heil, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that you choose a microphone that will, at the very basic level, remove some of the issues that you're going to have to deal with in post-production. What do I mean by that? Well, a microphone like I have right here, which I'll be the first to tell you, this is not the microphone I would suggest all of you use. Okay. The mic I would suggest for you to use would be something like a dynamic microphone. Okay. But the mic I have here is a condenser mic and a condenser mic. The reason why I say don't use this is that a condenser mic picks up everything. Okay. It picks up your voice really well and it reproduces your voice really well, but it picks up every bit of noise in your room. Okay. And unless your room is treated, when I mean treated, I mean that it has like sound treatment and those sorts of things like that. Um, if you, if your room isn't treated, it's going to pick all that up, which means you're going to have to remove all of that. Okay. And I'll get to why I use this type of mic in a minute, but a dynamic mic, why I suggest using that. Okay. And they're actually fairly inexpensive. I think we, Elsie went through and did, um, well, Elsie's gone through it in the, the under 100 series uh, opener, but uh, Dave Jackson went through and gave a nice list of microphones to use for under $100, and a lot of them are all dynamic microphones. But the point is, the dynamic mic, the reason why I say use that if you're going to record is that it cancels out a lot of noise, okay? It's less sensitive, so it's not going to pick up all of your room noise, all those ambience, okay? On top of that, it's going to re reproduce your voice fairly well. It'll also add in a bit of that warmth to your voice. What do I mean by warmth? I mean like that presence that you get, that lower end in your voice. Now, if you're someone who has a voice that's on the higher end, this means you don't have to EQ as much, okay? Now, why do I use this condenser? Okay, the condenser I told you, don't use that, okay? The reason why is that my voice is naturally lower and the condenser is pitched to be a bit more on the high end. I like the way my voice sounds with this. Now, the trade-off, of course, is that I have to do more in editing, but it's a conscious choice. You want to kind of choose the microphone that fits you. It's almost kind of like Harry Potter, right? You know, the scene from Harry Potter where Harry's choosing a different one. It's kind of the same sort of thing, okay? You want to find the microphone that really amplifies and really complements your voice the best it can. And I would say try dynamic mics first. Now, aside from microphones, wear headphones. Please, wear headphones. Okay, you should be wearing headphones. If you have an engineer, they should be wearing headphones. If you have a guest, they should be wearing headphones. Everyone involved in that production should be wearing headphones. Okay, I've seen stock footage <laughs> that I've used in some of our materials and I see people wearing headphones. I'm like, ah, you have to wear headphones, okay? The reason why is that for your guest, they need to be able to hear how they sound. They need to know how loud they are, how quiet they are. They need to know that they're coming through your mixer and back to them. So that's the reason why. On top of that, as the host slash producer or engineer, uh, you want to be able to hear all of the things that are being picked up on that recording. And if you're just trusting the... VU levels on your VU meter on your recorder or you're trusting, you know, if it's a digital recorder, you are, you're going to miss out on things that I'm going to tell you are going to be caught on that recording. Okay. These could be low end things like cars that are kind of going outside of, you know, the, the, the rec recording location. Maybe there's some high pitched whistling that's happening from an AC. That's maybe two rooms back from you. The point is, Wear headphones so you know what exactly is being recorded on your recording, okay? Um, talking about recording location, pick a place that actually sounds good, okay? Now, what do I mean by this? This means that at minimum, you should find a location that has some sort of carpet, okay? Because mainly carpet is going to uh, reduce the incidence of echo and reverb. Reverb is an, is an audio engineer's nightmare, Okay? It's not fun, um, but but reverb is something that that 
especially podcasters really have to contend with. If you're in a location that has a lot of reflective surfaces, that reverb is going to come back. Now you can solve this by again, picking a room that doesn't have as much reflective surfaces that you don't have a window in your recording location because windows will pick that stuff up. You can, now let's say, for instance, you know, you, you have a location, but you have, you know, walls. How do you deal with that? Invest in some sound panels. They're not that expensive. Just put a couple in areas that you think those echoes might, might kind of uh, reflect on. And those sound panels will enha- will absorb those, those reverbs. So you don't have to worry about that. I've seen some people who've had like those like self-contained, uh, you know, sound booths. I don't think you necessarily need anything like that. I think you just need to be cognizant about your location and be aware of what are some issues you could run into with it. Okay. And and finally, and this is really important and something I think a lot of people kind of miss out on is make sure that your raw audio is as high quality in its fidelity as possible. Okay. Now, what does this mean? Does this mean you record an MP3? No, don't do that ever. Okay. MP3 is a good distribution format. It is not good for production, actually like recording. Okay. I suggest recording in wave format or wav. I've heard both, but wave format do 44.1 kilohertz. And I would say at minimum 16 bit. Okay. Um, if you can do more, all the better bit I'm talking about is bit depth. Think of bit depth in terms of how much, uh, I, I kind of like to think of it as like a bucket, right? 16 bit is a pretty good sized sand bucket uh 24 would be maybe like i don't know uh a steel drum okay and 32 is kind of like a big garbage can like a big like industrial garbage can it's just how much information is is captured in your audio file that's what bit depth is okay and it's important that you record with a high quality file because the processes we're going to be applying today basically how good of your recording you have is going to dictate how good sounding podcast you're going to have, how much you're able to push and pull with things like EQ and compression. So if you record with a low quality audio file, it's not going to sound good no matter how many processes you put it through. Okay. Uh, again, if you have a question about anything I've gone over, type a Q and then a colon in the chat and I'll get to it and I'll pop it up here. Okay. Now, with that said, um, that's true. That That's true. I'm going to pull that in here right now. So <laughs> uh, the Music's Edge 1 said, the bigger the bucket, the bigger the size, that file too. Now, you're absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. But when we're talking about the production side of it, recording that audio, file size really isn't an issue. File size is going to be dealt with once you actually export that thing out. You know, there's ways that we can go through and we can export that thing out into an MP3 so that that file is small enough for uh, distro. Okay, but great, good call out there. Good call out there. So let's jump over to what we're going to jump over to. We're going to jump over to talking about the different tracks of editing here. So, oh, and I get rid of that up there. Yep, subscribe there. So. I mentioned before that there are two different types of editing that you do. There's contextual and textual editing. Contextual editing, if you really want to think about it, is ultimately how do you structure your show in a way that it is coherent from beginning, middle to end. Okay. So that is, do you have an intro? Do you have a teaser that comes before the intro? Do you have filler words that are within your actual uh, podcast, things like ums and ahs and, you know, just spaces, those sorts of things, they will deviate your flow of your show to the point where an audience is not necessarily going to want to listen to it. If you're going off into tangents and it's filled with ums and ahs and things like that. So that all comes down to context. You're chopping up bits, you're removing sections that maybe just don't work for the flow of the podcast. Okay. Now, technical editing, which is what we're going to mostly be focusing on today is that side of the edit where ultimately you're not so much worrying too much about the context, but about the quality of your audio. Okay. This is where you're doing things where you're removing bits 
out of the audio itself. You're enhancing things, you're removing things like sounds and, you know, just things that happen while you're recording. Okay. It's enhancing that audio that you already have. So it sounds as good as possible. Okay. Those are the two tracks that we're working with today. Technical is where we're going to be fo focusing on the most, but we'll definitely be taking a peek at context and how to really cut together a show really well. Okay. Now I do want to mention that um, I mentioned that I'm getting, I'm using remote recording for this. So I'm using a remote recording that I already captured with my co-host, uh, John Willis Croft of the cinema psycho show. Now, where did I get my remote recording? This is important to bring up here. Okay. So you can get a remote recording from anywhere, but I'm using clean feed. So clean feed, if you've never heard of clean feed, clean feed is a, uh, it's kind of like a peer to peer type of, uh, remote recording solution. It's very similar to Squadcast and Riverside FM. The biggest difference is that Clean Feed is uh, browser based and it is audio only. Okay. Now I've been using Clean Feed since the pandemic initially started. My show, we really struggled to find a solution for us that gave us the best possible audio quality, but allowed us to conduct our show remotely. So we switched primarily to Clean Feed. Um, you know, really early on in the pandemic and we tried zoom and everything else like that. And it, and it really clean feed just ended up being the, the better bet here. Okay. So clean feed is what I use, but ultimately, you know, it's a free solution. Uh, they do have a paid version. I haven't really played around with it, but honestly, if you've got a two person recording, the free version of clean feed, if you're just looking for audio is really awesome. I love it. It's great. Um, but that's how I recorded the session I have here today. All right. So as I mentioned with remote recordings, unless you're, you're using something that already provides you with mono channels. Um, one of the first things you're going to have to do is separate out your audio into two distinct mono channels. Okay. Now I mentioned that any DAW that, that, that you look at can do this. Uh, what I'm going to be using today is Adobe Audition. Okay. Now Adobe Audition, some of you might use it. Some of you might use something else. Uh, I use Adobe Audition because it's what I'm most familiar with. And it's what honestly, I, I think, you know, if you're in that ecosphere of, uh, of the Adobe products, Audition's just there. So might as well use it. Um, but everything I'm going to show you today can be done in just about every DAW you play around with. So if you really love working with Reaper, if you really love working with Audacity, you can do a lot of what I would be talking about. It just might be that the buttons are a little bit different. I also wanna make mention that if you have never played around with audio DAWs before, I've been in your shoes before, a lot of what I'm gonna be showing you are things that I have learned from digesting years of tutorials from people like Mike Russell of Music uh, Radio Creative, it's a really like a scion when it comes to Adobe audition tutorials, as well as Jason Levine from Adobe itself, like their YouTube channel. So, you know, I, I'm kind of, <laughs> I I've taken a lot of their, their processes and really kind of fine tune it for what works for me. Okay. So let's jump over to audition just in case if you've never seen it before. Uh, so this is Adobe audition and Adobe is, is interesting that, Ah, cool edit pro. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it was back when it was that. Um, so Adobe audition is, is interesting in that they actually provide you with two distinct workflows when dealing with audio, you have what is referred to as destructive editing or what they call the waveform view. And you have the multi-track view. I've seen when I was actually doing the research for the under 100 editing, um, video, I was surprised to see that a lot of the other DAWs out there, they only had the multi-track view and that was it. So audition is kind of on its own a little bit that it does separate out those two different workspaces. And depending on what you're doing, you might be bouncing around between the two. For me, I kind of start off in this, the waveform view, which again is the, the more destructive side and destructive just me, <clears throat> excuse me, destructive just means that the processes you're going to do are going to have a destructive means to the file. Okay. So it's actually going to alter the audio file. 
And you might say, well, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to alter my file. Here's the thing. Certain processes like noise reduction, spectral editing, those sorts of things, they all work off of a destructive path. So you kind of have to sometimes work destructively, but there is a solution for it. Okay. So in the waveform view, I've got a folder here and I have all my little bits that I've recorded here. I have a test episode. This is a raw recording. I have a uh, piece of theme music. Well, actually, I have a piece of theme music right here. And I've already pre-mixed it, pre you know, already exported that. This is one of the first things that I did uh, when I created my show was to create some theme music and kind of really mix it into something really nice. And then I have um, our kind of ident because I'm part of a podcast network called Epicast. So I have these three little things. And this is kind of common with, uh, with any episode that I work on. Um, if you have listened to my show, you know that there's a theme music and there's usually an ender. That's just that little ident. So these are kind of the three elements here. And then I also have a folder for exports because I want to keep things organized. I'll be the first to tell anyone who's listening to this, this live stream that I am not the most organized person. I'm organized to a point. It's still something I struggle with, but when it comes to podcast episodes, I tend to try my best to really organize things because you can end up with loads and loads of files if you're not careful. Okay, so let's bring in kind of our raw audio here and we can kind of see what we're working with. Okay, so bringing it in right here, this is a stereo file, okay? And it was recorded again with clean feed. It's bit depth. It's about 16 and it's 48 kilohertz. So it's not exactly 44 or one, but that's okay. We can make do with it. All right. And the way I've kind of set this up is I have myself on one channel and I have my co-host on another. Okay. And what I want to do is I just kind of want to uh, first go through and I'm actually going to play this out so you guys can all hear this and see what we're actually talking about. It's only about six minutes, but I want to play it through so you can kind of hear what we have to work with here. They shot about 55 action. Okay. I'm rolling now here and three, two, one. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm your host, Brian Coddington, joined by my fellow co-host and filmmaker, John Woolscroft. Top of the dark morning to you, sir. Top of the dark morning to you, too. This is a very special episode, mainly because this episode is really designed for my editing purposes for this this live stream uh, that it's playing on right now. Um, and, and usually, usually our episodes are, are a bit more uh, uh, filled with colorful language, as we are an explicit podcast. Um, but for the sake of this editing exercise here, we're going to keep it to uh, G or PG. PG. Yeah, PG. PG. Fine. I'll watch my P's and Q's. I might say sassafras. Sassafras. You know? cool. Right, gingerbread. You know? There you go. There you go. So, John, a um, little bit of news around you for this short, very short, never really going to go out into the public episode aside from this <laughs> editing <laughs> exercise here. Um, but a little movie you worked on got distribution recently right yes yeah it's been a long time coming for anybody who thinks that uh you just you just make a motion flicker show and then immediately the whole world sees it it's a little harder than that especially on an independent level so this thing was shot in december 2019 the editing was actually a very quick turnaround in terms of editing but it's been doing festivals and talk and dealing with like you know uh distributors and things like that and it's finally gotten its release in stores and what is this little streaming. thing that you're talking about, by the way? Uh, it's a movie called Cyst. From okay. So, hopefully that was playing. <laughs> hopefully. I look, on my end, it looked like it was playing. But if it didn't, um, I can assure you that it's, there's, there's two ends to this. But, anyway, this is actually not a bad recording. Okay? It's actually not too terrible. Uh, the recording itself is fairly clean. You know, there aren't any... any things like I don't have AC running or anything like that. Um, but ultimately awesome. I'm glad you all can hear it. <laughs> I, I'm getting like chat saying we can't hear it, but we can. <laughs> so, um, either way, either way, uh, what this is, is basically a very basic recording. Yeah. So the thing is, is that with a stereo recording like this, what I like to do is separate out these channels into mono. Okay, because it's a lot easier to work with mono when you're actually working with, um, 
you know, your podcast platform of choice, whichever your hosting platform is, I always suggest mixing everything down to mono and not stereo. It's just going to save you space. So we have to kind of work with these files into mono. Now, what I'll do first is actually right click and do extract channels to mono. Okay. And that'll just give me two distinct files now. And what I'll typically do is, is I'll hold on to this original recording. And this is what I say whenever you're working with uh, destructive, you know, always have some sort of backup. So I've got these extracted mono files, but guess what? I still have that original. I can always fall back to if I overdo it with my particular, um, you know, edits here. Okay. So if we look at our first one here, which I believe this was, this might've been me show the madhouse or yep this is mine so right now looking at these is say you know uh test episode lips and l that doesn't really tell me who it is so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna save these first so we'll go to file save as and we'll just call this one uh test app brian and what that will do is just tell me and yeah, put this in editing demo file and that will just tell me that, hey, this is my site here. Okay, we'll hit OK, and that saves that. And we'll do the same thing for my co-host. So we'll select him and go to Save As, and choose Test App John. Okay, and again, save it in there. So it just basically it helps me identify. There we go. save that again there we go let's do John one there we go I must have saved over myself that happens so if we look at our files here they look okay right um, but they actually aren't so for instance right now I can see that that John's file here you know i've got points where it really spikes and kind of overblows out my levels here there's a lot of dynamic range which you might say is good but honestly with a podcast you really don't want a ton of dynamic range you want it to be fairly even um you know you've got parts here where it really peaks out mine um not bad but again we don't really know how good or bad this is we're just looking at the waveform okay if we take a listen to like the middle area here it's really hard to hear but there actually is a little bit of room noise there okay and that's something that i i generally will take care of first even before i normalize my audio is i like to denoise it uh and i know with john's especially there's a lot more okay yeah, you can hear that little, I'll click that, you hear a little bit of hiss there. Just a little, it's a little hint, okay? So let's first deal with denoising this. And I generally do denoising before I even do normalization, just because of the fact that if I do normalization first, normalize it to a level that really is going to be good, it's going to bring up all of that stuff, and I don't want that at all, okay? So... Let's go in and the first process is going to be noise reduction. And now audition comes with two different types of noise reduction filters. Um, there is the regular straight up noise reduction effect, which works great. And there is the adaptive noise reduction effect. I like using the regular noise reduction effect, especially for something like this, where there really is just a little bit of hiss there. It's not nothing more than just some basic room noise. So the way this works is you kind of have to capture a noise profile. All right. So like right here, if we just play that back. That's a good noise profile. Okay. So I'll go to my effects and we'll go to noise and reduction and we'll choose capture noise print. Okay. And it's going to say, hey, we're going to capture this for a print. Cool. Let's do that. And then go to effects go to effects and we'll go to noise reduction restoration choose noise reduction process and my windows over here so bring it over now this actually is the noise reduction effect here 
And ultimately what this does is it tells you kind of, hey, this is, you know, how much noise, when it's looking at your actual noise print profile, you already point, you already picked out, okay? And that's what this yellow line is here. And this green is kind of how much you can reduce it by, right? Um, like what that threshold is, okay? So if I bring it all the way down to zero, okay, you're going to see that if we play this back now, you're going to hear all that noise, okay? We don't want that. Um, if I bring it all the way up, and let's say I come over to maybe about like right here, okay? Like right when he's talking. Let me play that. PG, yeah, PG's fine. I'll watch my P's and Q's. I might say. So you might say, well, that's great. That works, right? Um, but I would say to kind of be careful with noise reduction because what can often happen is if you reduce this down too much to the point where you don't hear anything, um, it will introduce a ton of artifacts, okay? The moment that the person starts talking. Okay, so that's kind of very important to keep in mind is that you you really kind of are conservative with how much noise reduction you apply. Um, you can also play around here with a second slider, which is just, you know, setting how much noise reduction you want to do. And then what's the level you want to reduce it by in terms of dB. Setting it to kind of this 10 is fine. The nice thing, too, is that all of these effects you'll find has a preset right at the top. This one, of course, doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but usually you can pick, you know, different presets depending on what you're doing. My guess is because I, I've done this a while, I kind of knows <laughs> might, might have deleted those. But the point is, is that, you know, you want to kind of try to find a happy medium. So maybe we can get away with about 60%. Let's take a listen to that. So it's still there, but it's not as bad. PG, yeah, PG's fine. I'll watch my P's and Q's. I might say, that's not bad. I think we can actually push it a bit more, get it really close. Because again, we're going to normalize this thing. PG, yeah, PG's fine. I'll watch my P's and Q's. I might... Okay, I think that's actually good. All right. The other thing too is that you can always output the noise to see if it actually is catching any of your audio. So like, Right now, if I play this back, you'll hear the noise. You know, it's really kind of distorted, kind of weird, like, you know, almost like it sounds like a robot. So, you know, if you're hearing a lot of that voice in there, then you know you're kind of too heavy handed with the noise reduction. But honestly, I think this is fine. I'll hit select entire file and hit apply. Okay. And now that's done some noise reduction to my levels here. Uh, let's actually listen to my version because here's the thing. Uh, now, I removed a lot of noise out of my co host. There's a little bit in there, it's not as bad. So I think we can get away with doing a little bit of noise reduction here. So, again, same process go to noise reduction, capture noise print, and say OK and go to effects, noise reduction process. And again, you can see that now this little waveform here is a little bit different because now we're looking at my mic and the noise that's in my room, okay? So we can kind of keep that, but again, I wanna make sure that I'm not too heavy handed with this. Sassafras, cool. There you go, there you go. And the nice so thing John, is that we can um, always- So John, a little bit of news around adjust you this. for this short, very short, Never really going to go out into the public episode, aside from this editing <laughs> exercise here. Um, but a little movie you worked on. So with this one, I'm actually going to bring it down to maybe about 90% and hit apply and select the entire file and apply. Just because there already isn't a lot of noise to begin, begin with in there, and I am going to do some normalization, so I think this is fine for where it's at right now. So after noise reduction... The next stage is what's referred to as normalization. So what this means is just that you take your audio file and you normalize it. You make it a set loudness level for the file. Okay. Think of it as kind of like amplifying it a bit. All right. So with this file right now, my peaks are, are hitting roughly around negative six. 
Okay, negative 6 dB. So I have a favorite already built in here called uh, normalized to negative 3 dB. That's where I like to have it set to. I wouldn't go to zero, and that's mainly because of the fact that once we bring this into multi-track, you're going to have both of these audio files kind of like sandwiched right on top of one another. And if you're feeding out to mono, that means that you've got both of these audio files kind of hitting against each other. And if there's any crosstalk, that's going to kind of add on to that dB level. So negative three is fine. If you want to be even more conservative than that, you can do negative, negative six. Um, but if we just click this, it's going to take my file. And it's going to normalize it. Okay. So you can see that now it's a bit louder. My peaks are hitting at about negative three and it's it made my entire waveform a little bit louder. So let's play this through and kind of take a listen. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm your host, Brian Coddington, joined by my fellow co-host and filmmaker, John Woolscroft. Yeah, so not bad, okay? And it, it might be subtle, and that's okay because we haven't yet jumped into multi-track, but this is a process you're going to want to do. Uh, so let's do the same thing over with John's file here. And now this one's going to be interesting because we have a file right here that's kind of too loud. Now what normalization does do, and this is something to keep in mind, is it kind of looks at your overall peaks and tries to kind of balance it out. So let's apply normalization here and see what happens. Let's go to favorites. So if you saw what happened, it kind of shrunk everything down, right? So it made it a lot quieter. And that happened because of the fact that we have these little peaks right here that are kind of throwing everything out of whack, okay? So let's uh, undo that there, so Control Z. And the way I like to deal with this is because if we look right here, these aren't too bad, you know, these are negative two, but this one right here, these, these two peaks right here are blowing out. So let's zoom in a bit and grab this slider at the top, zoom in, and I'm gonna select it and just bring them down, okay? Just select that peak and just bring its amplitude down. We'll bring it down to maybe already negative three because we already know it's going to peak out. We'll do the same thing with this one here. We'll grab the little volume knob here. And this is, again, just a normal volume knob, but it's applying it to just this little area here. And let's play it back, and let's just take a listen to see how it sounds, make sure we haven't ruined it too much with our process. PG. Yeah, PG's fine. I'll watch my P's and Q's. I might say sassafras, you know, or ah, gingerbread. Yeah, so that raw gingerbread was the thing that was blowing this thing out. Okay. But if we look now at our waveform, that's been reduced down. Now we can go ahead and do our favorites here. And if you didn't have a favorite here, this I think is one of the ones that comes with Audition. But you can always go to uh, Amplitude and Compression, Normalize Process, and then choose what dB you want. So with this one, we'll again type negative 3 and hit apply and that reduced it down a bit but it it's it didn't like squash all of my my waveform right here okay which is why i didn't want okay so let's play through this section here pg yeah pg's fine i'll watch my p's and q's i might say sassafras you know or ah gingerbread yeah it's not bad not bad at all okay now now that we've done all that um, one, the next thing I'm going to move on to is talk about spectral editing. And it's, again, it's a destructive process, but it's something that depending on things that happen in your audio, you may need to do. Okay. So what is spectral editing? Okay. So if we come in here and we jump over to our view and we choose show spectral frequency display, we're going to get a very scary looking um waveform here okay and this actually is a heat map that's what's referred to as the heat map um and this is your audio if it was displayed as color and based on intensity how intense that audio is now we already did some noise reduction so you can tell that these areas of black pretty much that means that that we don't have anything any noise being captured right and these areas of orange and red and purples, you know, really light purples, that's our, our actual voice, okay? Now, what can you do with the spectral edit, okay? What this allows you to do, and I mentioned this in our 
uh, DAW uh, video is that you can use this to take out sounds that maybe were captured during the recording and you don't have to necessarily chop up the way. I mean that, uh, let's say, you know, uh, in, the, in the case of this, maybe a, uh, a, uh, a smoke alarm goes off in your house, okay? And maybe it's, it's you know, downstairs. It's not necessarily up where you're recording, but you can hear a little bit of that being caught, right? Um, in the spectral edit display, uh, what you can do is actually isolate that sound and take it out without actually destroying your waveform. Okay. Now you might say, well, well, Brian, how do I kind of read this? What are these numbers over here? Well, these numbers are your frequency uh, bands. Okay. Your frequency spectrum. And if you've never messed around with audio editing, understanding what the frequency spectrum is, is probably one of the most important things because all of these tools are kind of looking at that spectrum. So I want to pull up something real quick here. And it is this, uh, awesome chart that I, I found from uh, producer hive. And this is a vocal EQ cheat sheet. Okay. It is really cool. Basically what this is, it shows you what your frequency spectrum is and it applies it to your voice. Okay. So just talking about this here, we start all the way from zero and we go up to about 80 Hertz in this area. This is, this is generally where it, you've got that low end rumble. Okay. So things like, you know, uh, a car that might be outside or, you know, any sort of room noise might be caught in that low end rumble. Okay. And, and generally we're, we're going to probably do some EQ to it too, but that low end rumble is really in that 80 Hertz to zero. Okay. Uh, moving up the notch here, from about 100 hertz to 300 hertz, these are where your core frequencies are. When we refer to core vocal frequencies, we're talking about like where your voice kind of originates, okay? And it kind of varies depending on the voice. Uh, a female voice might be a bit more high pitched. They really like my voice is very deep, so it's probably more closer to that at, at 100 than that 300. But ultimately, the this is where kind of your voice originates from. Okay, this is where also you're going to find that warmth I was talking about, that really nice low end. Okay, uh, moving up the notch there, 350 to 600, this is where you get what's referred to as the box region. This, if you're trying to listen to this, this is where you're going to find some muddy frequencies or hollow, depending on the recording. Okay, also in this area, this is where some of those reverb, reverb is going to lie. Okay, some of those echoes are going to lie in this region here. This is kind of your, your, I'd say your lower mid section area. Okay. In the mid range bite, what's referred to from one to four, this is where you get a lot of the clarity in your voice. Okay. This is where you get some of the, the really nice, nice presence in the voice. It's the higher end. You're getting from the high end of the mid tones and starting to move up to the, the higher ends of your voice here. And if you have a voice like mine, and again, this is the reason why I went with the condenser mic over a dynamic mic is that a condenser mic is going to have a bit more presence in that higher end there. Okay. And next up we have the sibilance air, which is five to eight kilohertz. Now this, this is where you get those harsh S sounds. Okay. Harsh S sounds that nobody likes. All right. Um, that area, we generally would probably try to remove, uh, some of those sounds, but ultimately if we have harsh S's, they're going to reside in that five to eight kilohertz range. And above that, that's where we get the air region. Uh, sometimes I've found that if you have really high pitched sounds that get caught in your feed in your recording, excuse me, um, they're going to reside there. And sometimes you might need to either boost that or roll them off or just isolate them and take them out. Okay. So with that said, let's jump back over to audition and let's take a look at kind of what we have to work with here. So let's just pick a couple of these out. All right. So if we zoom in a bit and we kind of play through this here. Okay. So if we look at like this one right here. 
So like that right there, we can hear that. That's a nice, harsh thing there. Now, he mentioned cyst, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be a harsh S sound there. So let's get to kind of point where that's at. Yes, yeah, it's been a long time coming. For anybody who thinks that uh, you just you just make a motion flicker show and then immediately the whole world sees it. So there's a sees it. That's, that's definitely going to have an S sound. So let's take a look at that and kind of see where it's at there. So right here is that seize it. Seize it. Okay. So that's, again, we can see right here, this little area. If we look across, we can see it is in that 10. It's probably, I'd say, within that 7 to 8.5K range. That's where that S sound is. So the nice thing about this is that from here, I can draw a marquee. If I think it's a little too harsh, I can just notch this down a bit. Notch it down a bit more. And if we click away, you can see that it's now less intense. Seize it. Okay. Seize it. So that's one way of dealing with those those kind of harsh S's that you can kind of use the spectral edit display for. Okay. Now, I'm pretty sure that he didn't have any errant sounds in his recording. Oh, yeah, we do. We have a little low. It looks sounds like a mic bump there. Okay. So this is a really cool thing. This is what I love about the Spectral Edit is that we can come down here. We can see that it's definitely on that low end. It's at that 200 hertz area. It's these little bits and bobs right here. And what I can use is the uh, Spot Healing Brush. I love this tool. This is how awesome it is, okay? So I can take these little bits here that I know are you know sounds I don't want, and I can draw on them. It processes it, and boom, it's gone. Can't even hear it anymore. Okay. If we move forward a bit, there's a smack there, a lip smack. Draw it, gone. Come over here. He has a, uh, a, yeah, I mean, we can keep that in if we want to, but like, it's so easy to just grab these little bits that maybe, you know, normally we wouldn't notice, or we might try to just cut out or silence in the waveform view, but we can do it all within the spectral edit display and we're not even touching any of our actual audible audio. Now, I'm going to jump back over to mine, because I know I do have some in here. Okay. So let's play through, because I think I have one right about there. Mm-hmm. That's right here. Yeah. So this right here, I purposefully, and I, I never do this, I purposefully made sounds <laughs> that will show up here. So if we play this through... You can hear that something's being crunched, and it's showing up right here. So we can remove that, and I'd probably be a bit more heavy-handed, just use the marquee selection on there, just because I know it's nothing, and just take it and bring it down. And now it's gone. Okay, so... You, what I would suggest doing is that you go through this and you just yeah. find those bits. Like there's one right over here. Yeah. That's me saying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you just want to find those, those, those noises that there are. So some right over here. Might be leftovers. Yeah, that's tapping. So again, let's use the spot healing brush. We'll zoom in a bit. And just kind of wipe them out. Again, it's a fantastic tool. It does a, a great job of removing sounds that you don't want. Okay. And when you're done and you don't want to see this anymore, you just go up to view, you turn off the show spectral frequency display, and you're good to go. Okay. So we've done a lot already. Okay. We haven't even touched anything with EQ, um, but we have taken care of a lot of issues uh, already. So I'm going to save this again and save my other one.
All right. And next up, what we're going to end up doing is actually jumping over to um, the multi-track. Okay. So the multi-track view, because we're in the waveform view, we want to create a new multi-track show. So go to multi-track, and we're going to call this just test show. All right. Test show. And we'll make sure that we choose our location in our editing demo. And we'll just part this as multi-track. Create. Choose. And the nice thing is that the multi-track actually has a bunch of templates that you can use. So you can use the podcast template. I don't just because I've been doing this for so long that, that I, I have my own kind of workflow. So I'm going to choose this as none. I'm going to set my sample rate to 48, 44, one. Okay. Bit depth is going to be 32 and my mix. I'm going to make it as mono. Okay. Because again, I want to go with a mono mix because it's going to save on space. And ultimately for a podcast, you really don't need a stereo mix. Okay, it's a lot easier to use mono. You got to figure that your audience might be at the gym. They might only have one headphone in and you don't want to have that conversation kind of lost by having it be in stereo. So I'm going to keep it at mono. Click OK. And this now brings me up to the multi-track session. As you can see, all the files I worked on in the waveform view, they're all right there. And I've got this nice new multi-track. Okay. And this is where you're going to build out your show ultimately. So what I tend to do is I name my tracks first. So call this one Brian, call this one John, and then I have my theme music. So I put all of those on different tracks because you got to figure, you know, my theme music might be a little bit loud than say my vocals and just making sure that common tracks are on, or common elements are on, you know, their own track is just going to be easier for you. So I put them all there. And the other thing that I do, and this is something that I don't think everyone does, it's something that, that I found works for me, is I route all of my vocal tracks to what is referred to as a bus, okay? And a bus, just think of it as kind of like a, a, a mix before the final mix, okay? So with my first track here selected, I'm going to go to this output here. And right now it's going to this mix, which the mix is all the way down here, all right? So I'm going to choose bus. I'm going to add a bus and make it mono. Okay. The reason why I do this is because I'm going to add processes that I want to apply to both vocal tracks. Okay. Namely compression. Okay. I generally like to add my compression uh, at the end of the stream. Okay. So I've got my one vocal going to that bus. I've got John's vocal. I'll set that to bus A. And my theme music, I could set that, but honestly, I'm I'm fine with just kind of adjusting that on its own. Okay. So we've got that set up. Let's bring in our tracks. Drop them in. Now, this is going to happen because one thing I didn't do, and again, I always do this, is I convert the sample rate from 48 kilohertz to um, uh, 44.1. Okay. So I didn't do that. So now it's telling me, hey, your project is 44.1, we got to convert it. So I'll say, okay, and it's going to make a copy and it's going to convert it over. Again, very easy to work with this. And converting the sample rate is not going to do too much to it, um, especially because we started with something that's 48 and now went down to 44.1. So let's do the same thing with John's. Bring his in, hit okay. And there we have it. Now, what's important with this is that you absolutely try your best to keep these things lined up, especially if you have a back and forth conversation. Once you start moving these things around, it, it gets kind of kind of nutty. Okay. So looking at this first, can be, listen to it. The Cinema Psycho Show, the Madhouse for Film Freaks, and just hear how everything types. sounds. I'm your with host it. Brian Coddington, joined by my fellow co-host and filmmaker. John Woolscroft. Top of the dark morning to you, sir. Top of the dark morning to you, too. This is a very special episode. So not bad so far. Not bad. Okay. Now, there's a couple things that we can do to this before we even start chopping it up. Okay. And that actually deals with 
uh, EQ and compression. Okay. So EQ, if you're not familiar with that, is just equalization. Okay. The way I like to think about EQ is that it is a volume slider, just like your volume slider in here. Okay. The only difference is that it is targeted to your frequencies, to each of your bands in your frequency. Okay. So analogy I like to use all the time is that a volume slider, like we had in the waveform view over here, like this, this guy up here, you know, that's a machete. EQ is a scalpel. Okay. That's ultimately what it is. Okay. Now there's a bunch of ways to EQ stuff, a ton of ways that you could EQ stuff. You could EQ in the waveform if you wanted to, which means it would be destructive, or you could EQ in the multi-track. Either way, as long as you're EQing is what's important. Now, where do we apply our effects in the multi-track? Well, we have an effects rack right here. And we have two options here. We can either apply clip effects or we can apply track effects. Now, I know that this track right up top here is gonna have all of my vocals, no matter what, okay? If I cut a portion out of this and put it as a teaser at the beginning, that's okay. I want it to apply to that entire track. So I'll make sure I have track effects selected, click my little drop down here, and we're going to choose filter and EQ. And then I like to use the parametric equalizer. There's a bunch of other EQs you can use. You can use the 10 band, the 20 band, the 30, whatever you use is fine. <clears throat> the parametric EQ, honestly, it, it's, it's the best one that comes loaded up with audition okay so let's choose that and you can see i already had something on here uh, i'm going to set it to default and just like the spectral edit tool you know we have this little chart of all of our different bands we can play around with okay right here and let me actually zoom in a little bit to so that we can see this here so let's zoom in a bit let's see if we can zoom in there we go okay so we have our our, free, our our parametric EQ right here that we can play around with. And one thing that, that I, I, I wish that they would fix and, and <laughs> I wish they would, would work is that you're only given about five bands of EQ, not including your high shelf uh, or low shelf or low pass filters. And I wish that they would give you more than that. I was kind of, kind of upset when I saw that Reaper had unlimited numbers of bands that you could play around with. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I suggest no matter what you do for EQ that you do this, is you add a high pass filter. Okay. So remember when we looked at our chart here, I said that this low end rumble here, right? That 20 to 80 hertz there, you're going to want to knock that out. Okay. Either way. Okay. Regardless of what you do EQ wise, you want to knock that out. So a high pass filter will basically roll off all that low end frequency that you don't really want and allow that higher end frequency to pass through. That's why it's called a high pass filter. And you can choose how aggressive that slope is. So 24 dB is kind of the default, um, but you can choose like six, which is really not doing much or 48, which is a real like steep aggressive hit. I think 24 is fine. And what we're going to do, and this is something that I like to do too, is I like to just select a portion of this. So like right here and make sure loops on. Okay. And we'll play it back. The dark morning to you too. This is a very special episode. So you can see that mainly because this now wiping out that low end. And this is, you can see there is some bits there and episode is really designed do. for my editing purposes for this this live stream uh, that it's playing on right now. So about right there, and that is roughly 48 hertz. Well, we could probably get a little bit. Um, and, and usually, usually our episodes are, are a bit more uh, uh, filled with... I think that's actually not bad. So that's... I moved it up to about 57. And, you know, ultimately, it's kind of up to taste, okay? But what you really want to do is you want to move this high-pass filter until you get to the point where you start to cut into your voice and then you back it off. Okay. Because you can see if I, if I really push this colorful language as we are an explicit podcast, um, but for the sake of this, you know, again, my voice is already low. I know that if I go past a hundred Hertz, 
it is starting to turn my voice into a walkie talkie and I don't want that. All right. So again, maybe around, let's do 60 Hertz. This editing exercise here, we're going to keep it. That's not bad. Okay. And then becomes the, the very fun process, if you will, of EQing your voice. Okay. There's many methodologies to take when EQing your voice. Um, what I like to do is uh, sweep technique. It's a sweep technique, which just means that you're kind of taking these points and sweeping across the spectrum and trying to find those sounds that were in your recording and trying to remove them. Okay. So what do I mean by sounds that you're going to hear? You might hear some of that reverb that's naturally in your room. Again, if you're not in a studio, you're going to hear it. Okay. Um, maybe there's some other weird frequency. Maybe you don't like how certain things sound, you know, you can take those things out right at this point. Okay. Again, this is a scalpel. This isn't a machete. So there's a bunch of ways to do it. I like to raise it up. And again, we can look right here. This point number two, we have our Hertz, we have our, our, uh, volume, and then we have our Q amount or width. So to make this work, what you want to do is you want to narrow this band a bit. You want to raise this up to about six dB. You can go more if you want to. Um, but you know, I've, I've had issues happen where if I raise this all the way up and I've seen some people say, Oh, you got to raise this like all the way up here. The problem is, is that once you raise the volume of something up to like 13 dB, everything's going to sound bad. <laughs> and, and that's, it's not really helping you. So, you know, I think six, maybe 10 is enough. And then ultimately what you're doing is you're just sweeping along this. So I'm going to play this back and we're going to start, we're going to start past the 100 Hertz mark. And again, that's because that's that core frequency range. I don't want to cut too much of that out. Okay. And again, this is where having something like this frequency chart handy can help. So again, I know that maybe that 350 to 600 Hertz area, that's probably where I'm going to have some problems at. So we can use that kind of as a starting point. All right. And I'm not going to do the whole frequency thing here, but we're, we're going to do a couple here. So, um, so let's start maybe at that 300 area. Okay. And let's just play back to uh, G or PG. PG. Yeah, PG. PG. Good dark morning to you. Oh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solo this. So if you hit the S button up here, it solos it because I'm hearing my co host and I don't want to do that yet. Dude, this is a very special episode, mainly because this episode is really designed for my editing purposes for this, this live stream uh, that it's playing on right now. Um, and, and usually, usually our episodes are, are a bit more uh, uh, filled with colorful language as we are an explicit podcast. Um, but for the sake of this editing exercise here, we're going to keep it to, uh, G. So right there, I don't know if you can hear it, but I, again, I can hear it because I have headphones on. There's a little bit of a weird kind of like whistling sound in there. Okay. And that's more or less probably the room ambient noise that's being caught. Okay. That, that, the echo you get, the reverb you get. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to widen this a bit and I'm going to bring it down to maybe about four DB or actually bring it negative four DB, not four, bring it down negative four DB. Okay. So again, it's going to be subtle. You might not actually hear the difference, but once you go through and you start cutting out these frequencies, and again, you can do this for all five bands here. Uh, maybe we'll do one more kind of up in here at the one K range. And we'll raise it this time. Maybe we'll raise it to 10 so we can hear it. So I'm, it's loud enough, but it's not that loud. And again, I'll narrow this band so that I'm only listening to one frequency at a time. And I'm not going to lie to you. This is something that, that really you have to train yourself on. And the more you work with your voice, the more you start to notice those nuances, the more you start to, to notice where issues are at that you're going to see that this can happen and that, that you might need to take some, some frequencies out. So let's do one more here and let's listen to it or PG. 
One of the two. Kind of sweep this. The dark morning to you, too. This is a very special episode, mainly because this episode is really designed for my editing purposes for this this live stream. Yeah, right there. That's at 845 hertz. So right there, I'm going to take this one because I think this is a little bit more harsher. I'll take that down to maybe about negative six. Okay. And I'll widen that a bit so it takes up more. All right. And this is, again, just cutting frequencies. That's the first thing you want to do is just cut the frequencies. Now, you might be saying to yourself, does this mean I have to do this every episode? Yes and no. Okay. What does that mean? Well, the nice thing is that if you know that you record with one type of mic every time and you're in one location every time, you can save these as presets that you then can apply later down the line. Okay. So what I'm going to do is save this as a preset. So if you come right over here, you can click on this little save settings as a preset. We'll save settings and we'll just call this Brian's EQ. And what I would do is probably name the microphone and name the location so that any time that you're recording with that same microphone and in that same location, you can just type this in, boom, your bass EQ is done. Hit OK. And now you can see that I have that right there. Again, there's a bunch of presets you can use. I wouldn't use them, or I'd use them as kind of a starting point. The vocal enhancer is nice. Uh, again, it, it just, these, these are honestly are kind of like shortcuts. And I think it's a lot easier to kind of just spend the time to really learn how this tool works. Okay. So cutting frequencies and adding that high pass filter, that's kind of the first thing you're going to want to do. Okay. So, Click done there. There's my parametric EQ. And there you go. There Again, you go. because it's been applied as a track effect, it's applied to this entire track. Now, cutting frequencies is probably the one thing that you would do. The next thing you would do is probably enhance those frequencies. Okay. So with this one, um, I'm going to skip in cutting this one just for time's sake here. And instead, we're going to just add some boost to this. So let's make it a default. And let's look at how this is going here. So with this one, let's take a listen. Again, I'm going to solo this. Okay. And let's take a listen to it. Start right about here. PG. Yeah, PG's fine. I'll watch my P's and Q's. I might say sassafras. So he's got a lot of, of he's got a, l a little bit more of a higher end voice than I do. Um, I'm going to do high pass on his, bring it up a bit. Maybe we get to about 75. You know, we're ah gingerbread. Yeah, 75 is not, 73, 73, 75, whatever works. Um, and I might dip a bit. In the middle area here. PG. Yeah, PG's fine. And I might want to also enhance his. So what you can do, if you want to enhance a voice here, again, he's got a little bit less of a low end than I do. You can grab a low shelf, which is this L, and you can bring it up a bit. Okay, and this is, again, I, I would go through and I would definitely do some cutting of his, of his voice first, but the next step of the process is really enhancing so adding a bit of low end boosting a bit of low end now watch my p's and q's i might say sassafras you know, you know too much or, ah, gingerbread you know pg yeah pg and then maybe I'll add a watch little my bit p's and q's i might say sassafras of you know? high end and i put that point right where we wanted that clarity right so that's right at about 2k 3k range or, ah, gingerbread you know pg yeah pg's fine i'll Watch my P's and Q's. I might say sassafras, you know, or ah, gingerbread. Let's listen to that one more time with it on. PG. Yeah, PG's fine. I'll watch my P's and Q's. I might say sassafras. It just sounds a bit clear, right? And again, it's something that you might not necessarily pick up immediately, but it's something that you will over time, you know, really start to notice. So that's EQing. Click OK there. And again, that's applied to a track. And let's bring kind of everything together here. And let's start 
actually chopping this up. Okay, so we've got some EQ on there. Um, and let me actually zoom out a bit. There we go. All right, so let's play through. They shot about 55 action. So we got a little bit of extra stuff here. And I don't start actually starting my show until about right here. So this, again, this is part of context editing. So it's not necessarily the technical stuff. But I'm going to chop this beginning part here. I'm going to chop this beginning part here. I do the same thing to both sides. And then what I like to do is do fade-ins. These are envelopes or, or fade-ins. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm that's not bad, okay. And you know, to to because that's really what you need to do to sell. Mm -hmm. um, so he gets with narrative. We've like been sitting on our thumbs quite a bit in terms of the pandemic. Now this is one that I didn't deal with, and I'm glad I, I glad I, I I found it. So. How many times have you recorded a podcast and you find that you end up with a hard P or a plosive and you're just like, oh no, what am I going to do now? Okay. So that happened right here. And a hard P, all it is, is basically that you're using a microphone that doesn't have a windscreen and you're just that rush of air just smacks right into that microphone. Okay. And it makes this hard P that's right here. And it's really annoying. And it's something that uh, is kind of a pain, okay? And there is there is a way to remove it. You could either use the multi-track for this. Um, it's right here, this one right here. If we actually zoom all the way in, kind of move it over, you can see this. You see how it's kind of like really jagged? It doesn't look like the other waveforms here, really clean. That is your hard P right there. If we just select it, yeah, you hear that? It's really nasty, okay? And it's blowing things out. So a couple things we can do. I'm actually going to choose clip effects here because it's going to be applied to the clip. And we can go to, I think it's under, yeah, filter and EQ. FFT filter. Use this. You can keep it at default. That's fine. Um, or you can choose one of these different, um, you know, uh, different ones to use. Now, I'm actually going to pick Kill Mike Rumble, which, again, basically just cuts off everything at that 100 hertz, like cuts it off. So, let me bring it up a little bit more over here. Yeah, you can see as I bring this in, because there's that, that P right there. You can see it's reducing it, okay? And we just want to apply it to right there. That's fine. The pandemic. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think Ty... I don't like how that did that. Might do it in the waveform. Yeah, let's do it in the waveform here. So, again, like, there's... Like, it's really just comes down to playing with this to really figure out what you want to do. So like right here, that's, pen. that's that hard P. Select it. Effects. FFT. And apply. And I didn't do as much as I'd like. Let's do kill my grumble. And I'll bring it down a bit. And a bit more. Yeah. Apply. Pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that basically removed it. Now, you don't want to do that all the time. <laughs> it's not fun. Um, but if you ever find that you've got one or two hard P's that are kind of right in there at waveform, FFT filter will take care of that. Now, because I did it in the destructive side here, I am going to have to save this. So we'll go to file, go to save, and now we'll show back up <clears throat> in our multi-track. Okay. So that's definitely something you want to keep in mind. 
So now that we've kind of done all of our processes, and again, I didn't go over all of them. There are a bunch you could do. DSing is one that you could definitely do with this, but um, you know, all that can be can be done in the spectral display in the waveform. I do want to move on to context editing here. Um, so with that said, context editing, how do we do that? So I have kind of my bits here. I've chopped up kind of this part here. Um, what I want to do first is actually find some quote that I want to be kind of my teaser, okay? I always suggest that every podcast should have some teaser, okay? And it should be right at the beginning. It should be short. It should be sweet. And it should it could either be the best part of your episode or it can be kind of a um, overview of what you're going to be talking about. Okay. That's in essence all that teaser is. Okay. I'm of the mind because of the ways that I, I like my show to be is that you find that best part and that goes in the front. Okay. So usually deep in the conversations where you're going to find it. With, with narrative, we've like been sitting on our thumbs. So like there's, I know there's one right in here. Tangible Blu-ray or 4K, imagine that. Um, but there also is, you know, you could do all the streaming sites. So um, yeah, uh, definitely check that out. That is available. You know, he's done uh, other features, Texas Cotton. Here come actors. You know, to to because that's really what you need to do to sell. Mm -hmm. um, so he gets he gets production value. Now, this is really nice. I like this part. Steve, um, he's very good. He he knows how to play the game in terms of getting getting financing, getting. You know, he's done a cyst from an office in stores. And what is this little streaming. thing that you're talking about, by the way? Uh, it's a movie called Cyst from an up-and-coming uh, director uh, named Tyler Russell. You know, he's done uh, other features, Texas Cotton, Here Comes Rusty. Um, he's very good. He, he knows how to play the game in terms of getting getting financing, getting named actors, you know, to to because that's really what you need to do to sell. Mm -hmm. um, so he gets he gets production value and a couple of name people in there to because um, otherwise, how are you going to get people to click on a movie called Sist if they like, oh, let's watch Die Hard again? You know, so that I like. I like that little bit. So I'm going to isolate it. Just take it out right from when he says the movie is called Cyst, and we'll unsolo these. And then I'm going to basically copy, and I'll grab my tracks here. And again, I grab them in tandem. I don't want to lose anything here. And bring it over, and paste. And of course, it grabbed only one. Do that one again. <laughs> Let's do that one again right here. Copy. And threw it all over the place there. Weird. Clear my time selection and paste. There we go. So this now is an, a copy taken out of my actual uh, program here. Now, what I, again, suggest to do is that you, you know, pick something that maybe is under a minute. The other thing that I like to do is I like to take these little teasers right at the beginning. Now, this one's only about 30 seconds long, so it's not too bad and turn them into uh, audiograms. So you can use something like Headliner to turn that into an audiogram that you then share on Instagram. It's really a nice way of working. So, you know, nice little 30 second opener here. It's a movie called Cyst from an up and coming. Okay, that's gonna be my, my real, my teaser, okay? And again, the shorter, the better. If you can really find like a really awesome quote that someone says in your, in your podcast, throw that in the beginning there. Uh, and then I like to have my theme music kind of come right in. Okay. So my theme music is, I haven't brought that in yet. So let's go over to our media browser. Let's bring in my theme music. And again, I'm going to get that same thing of it saying it's going to convert it. Okay, cool. And there's my theme music. Now, I'm going to try to turn this down because I know my theme music is fairly loud. But I'm going to have this kind of 
end. Have a nice fade there. Oh, let's watch Die Hard again, you know, so. Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. <laughs> oh, my God, don't stop now. With your hosts, Brian, John, and Elaine. Okay, so that's the theme music. Now, I have mine set up, kind of set up where... And this is royalty free track, by the way. Always use pod safe music. Um, I have mine kind of set up where you have this little section here where it introduces the show and then it immediately has like a drop and then the rest of the theme song is there. And I like having that little bed right in the beginning. So I'm going to grab my tracks right here, bring them over to right when that drop happens. Okay. So right about here, drop it over a bit. And you can hear it's way too loud. You're not going to be able to hear me talking, but uh, I'm going to throw in some keyframes right here so I can keyframe the volume as it glides down. All right. So really easy. If you just kind of hover over this volume slider line here, just click once and then twice and just bring this down. And I like to bring it down to about, you know, 24, 26, negative 24, 26 dB. And then I add a fade so it fades off long over time. Okay. You can bring it in. Welcome to these. So that's a little too early. So let's bring it in a little bit back. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show. The now, listen to that. I think I need to bring it down a little bit more. 27. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm your... Yeah. Yeah. So, you can hear that the way this is nicely set up is that you'll have that kind of underneath there, and then it'll trail off naturally. You don't really want something that's like a hard transition off. I like having something that just nicely fades off so the audience really doesn't even know that that music's gone until they realize, oh, it's gone. So the edit for this really is just a matter of putting that nice tease at the beginning. Then we get the meat and potatoes. And again, when it, what depending on what your podcast structure is, you know, for mine, I, I generally know what we're doing. We've written it down. We know what we're going to be saying, how we're going to be moving. But you want to have that structure down pat well before you even record anything, you know. That's the nice thing about this is that if you do it this this way, where you have a lot of structure already built in, contextual editing really can be minimal. I don't do a whole lot of chopping up bits and things out of my multi-tracks. And that's mainly because for my podcast, I like to have it to be more natural. I like it to feel like, you know, the audience is sitting in a, a group of, with a group of people who are just talking about movies. That's kind of what I personally like to have with my podcast yours might be different you might want to have something that's a bit more structured um, but because we have a structure kind of in place it makes our our podcast a bit more natural sounding since that's already laid out okay so i don't really need to do too much more with this you know i could go in and start chopping things up i actually think this is fine you know and again this is a very short short sample episode so when we get to the ending, that's where it becomes the next batch of stuff to do. So I always have kind of a, if you will, kind of a, Hey, like, and follow us, that sort of thing. Um, right at the end here. So usually it comes in right about here. Well, I hope more comes out of narrative films. Again, I look forward to seeing cyst and I'm sure we're going to do Maybe. that. Yeah. That, well, John, where can they find you at on the social medias? Uh, you can find me on all on all the the uses for old men like me, like uh, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm not on like TikTok because I'm like an old fart and I don't really understand it. Uh, but you can mostly find me over on YouTube at J Dubs Video Nasties. Uh, that's my 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 second baby after this podcast. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely check it out and do all the the things you're supposed to do on youtube you don't need to 
music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can find me at, at, uh, at Brian Conton. I also run the Psycho Show page. Be sure to like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Psycho Show. Awesome. Yeah. So this section here, I like to bring the music back in, and I have it very low underneath it. Uh, so again, we'll use our music that's already been kind of mixed down. And again, this is kind of just from picking good music that'll work. So I like to have it come in right when we're, he's talking about where to find him at. And I bring this down really low, like maybe around 29 dB, because I don't want that, that background music to interfere too much with the vocals. So fade that off. And then the nice thing too is that, you know, in audition, it's really easy to duplicate clips because you can see this track only goes to about right here. So I'm going to hold down option on my keyboard or alt and just kind of bring this over and copy it over. So now I've got these nice crossfades that happen with that theme music. Soonish, maybe? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> that, yeah, that should be. Yeah, so we'll move this back a bit because I don't start until around here. Yeah. Let's see. Awesome. Uh, well, John, where can they find you at on this? And then, like, this one here goes a little bit too long, so we'll bring that back a bit. And, like, crossfade that up. And then, just right at the end, I like to bring the music back to full volume, just as kind of like a, again, kind of a reverse of what I did starting the show. So I'll put another keyframe there, bring this back up to maybe about, I'm going to bring it back to negative 3. 3.6 is good. Listen to audio, and we will see you next time. Bye, sis. Then that fade needs to come in earlier. And then once that ends, I like to add in our network's, you know, little ident. So, and again, if you're not a po part of a podcast network, eh, or if you're not a you know, don't have an ident, that's okay. You don't need one. Um, but, you know, we have a nice little ident. I throw that in right at the end. And I bring that volume down. And that's a little bit too early. So we'll fade that out there and crossfade it. So just bringing it in closer, we'll add these crossfades automatically. Epicast. 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 Okay. All right. Now, one thing I haven't done yet, and I just remember I haven't done it. I haven't set up my compressor. Okay. So that's like, the, again, the final process I do in the chain here. Okay. Because again, I have, even though I've done a lot with the volume of these vocals here, it, it, it still isn't quite level. Okay. And that's really where a compressor is going to come into play. Um, I'm going to do it on this bus that I created. So again, it's going to be in the effects rack. It's going to be a track effect. And there's a bunch of different compressors you can use. Um, I'm going to use the very simple tube model compressor. Okay. So if you're not familiar with what a compressor is, ultimately what a compressor does is it takes your audio signal and squishes it. That's, that's in essence what it does. It takes those really high ends where maybe you talked really loud and it brings them down. It also takes those really soft ends and really brings them up. Okay, so that's, again, why I put it at the end of the chain, because keep in mind, at this point, I've done noise reduction, I've done EQ, I've got both my signals sounding as clean as they're going to get, okay? So a compressor, again, you could put compressors on the individual tracks if you wanted to. Um, you know, I've seen people do a bunch of stuff with where they put compressors at the end of the chain. I like adding it on a bus at the end for vocals to kind of bring them all together. So when you add a compressor, you're going to have these different options here. Okay. You're going to have the threshold, which is at what DB level does this compressor kick in? You're going to have the ratio, which think of the ratio is just how much compression you're going to do. You have the attack, which is how fast that compressor is going to kick, compression is going to kick in. And you have the release, which is how fast is that compressor going to back off once we're no longer needing the compressor 
when we're not in that dB range. Now, by its very nature, a compressor is going to squish your audio, which means it's going to reduce the volume. So the last option here is that output gain. So you can add back some of that gain that you lose. So for me, what I always suggest is that you experiment <laughs> with the compressor. Okay. And again, I did this in the, the multi-track here, so it's non-destructive. All right. Um, you play around with the threshold. You play around with the ratio. The attack and release, I think you can kind of set these to be pretty fast. So like a, a attack of five milliseconds is pretty good. Um, if you find that the compressor is too fast, like you're hearing weird artifacts happen, you may want to add more release or reduce down your attack time. Okay. But I think five and a hundred default is fine for ratio. Start at two. You can go up to four, but I think two is a good starting point. Okay. Uh, and then threshold is just what that level is. So like, you know, play around with this and we can bring this threshold down. So let's start maybe at like negative 24 and let's listen to this. This is a very special episode, mainly because this episode is really PG. Yeah, PG. PG. Fine. I'll watch my P's and Q's. I might say sassafras. So I can already tell it's kicking in way too much. So let's back it off a bit. We make it about negative 12. Let's see what that is. Sassafras. No. Right, cool. gingerbread. No. There you go. There you go. So, John, a um, little bit of news around you for this short. And, and honestly, for my for what I'm trying to do, I'm really more concerned with John's dialogue since I know he has a lot of variance between his 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 speech so like mine is fairly loud to begin with it's mostly his i'm worried about yes yeah it's been a long time coming for anybody who thinks that uh you just you just make a motion flicker show and then immediately the whole world sees it it's a little harder than that especially on an independent level so this thing was shot in december 2000 into the public episode aside from this (laughs) so i think we need to bring that down a bit more maybe we make this 2.5 exercise here um but a little movie you worked on got distribution recently right yes yeah it's been a long time coming for anybody who thinks that uh you just you just make a motion flicker show and then and you can actually see down here the output this right here let's zoom in a bit if you look down right here this output area immediately the whole you can see that now we're kind of hitting that negative 12 and again that's because we've reduced reduced it down but if we jump between my vocals and John's vocals episode, aside from this, we're roughly <laughs> hitting around the same here. space, um, which is what just means that the compressor is doing its job. OK. So let me back this up here. OK, so I'm going to add a bit of gain to this. So maybe we make about three dB a gain. Um, a little bit of news around you for this short, very short Never really going to go out into the public episode, aside from this <laughs> editing <laughs> exercise here. And I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Um, so that's good for the compressor. Click away. That's now applied to it. Uh, and what I might do next is kind of adjust my theme music, because I know it's going to be loud. Oh, let's watch Die Hard again. You know, so. Oh, goody, goody. Here it comes. I should make it a bit. Negative one. So I did reduce it down. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show. You are- and this, the reason why I'm, why I'm adjusting the theme music, even though I don't have it on a compressor, is because I kind of want all of my waveform to be mixed to like that negative six. Because what I'm going to do after I export this thing out is, is really going to be important. So I want this all to be kind of roughly around the dB level that it needs to be. Okay, so that's pretty good there. We'll see if you see how it sounds over here. Uh, but you can mostly find me over on YouTube at J Dubs Video Nasties. That's a little too loud, so let's bring that down a bit more. The unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so that's not bad. Okay, so I like how that's good. So let's say that this episode's done, right? How do we get it out of this into an actual podcast? Okay, so go to file, we go to export, 
we go to multi-track mix and we hit entire session. Okay. Now what this is going to do is it's going to mix down everything. And again, I'm going to keep this mix to wave. Now you're going to find out why in a moment, but I want this to be wave because I'm going to do one last process to this thing. I'm going to add some optimization for loudness. Okay. So we're going to just call this test show mix down. We'll throw it in that exports folder that we created. So right in that exports folder, we'll hit save. And this all looks good here. Again, mono mix. If we wanted to change it, we could come in here to the mix down options and change it, but this is all fine. And we'll hit okay. It'll mix it down. And if we come over here, we should see our mix down, which is right here. And if we open up, we can see that we now have a nice even waveform. Okay. It's not bad. And actually this is, this is pretty good for uh, a podcast, right? This is actually pretty good, but our top peak right here is like right around negative six, which is okay for what we're authoring this at, but it's not good for distribution. We want this to be a little bit louder. If you look at uh, Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts, they all have loudness standards that you want to hit. And these are measured in LUFs, okay? And it just means the perceived loudness of a file, okay? Now, this, what I'm going to show you is something that only Audition has. Um, there are other processes you can run this through. Um, Levelator does a good job with this, a uh, bunch of different things. But ultimately, what you want to do is take this file here and make it a little bit louder to a set standard, okay? So the process we're going to use is the match loudness process, okay? So we're going to come back into our waveform, waveform view, and let's bring up my, where's that? Match loudness, where are you at? There we go. So match loudness is, it's basically a limiter. That's in essence what it does. It raises the volume of something to a set limit and kind of clamps it off, all right? Now, why is this okay? Limiters kind of ruin things. Not necessarily. We already mixed everything so that everything is not going to be popping things out. So when we apply a limiter, it's really just going to raise it up to that nice level, which is why I kind of keep it to, you know, negative three, negative six area. So all, the, all you have to do to use the match loudness is just grab the file, drop it into this section here, and then we'll come to the properties for it match loudness settings here and this is where you can kind of set that target loudness okay so the target loudness is going to be what luff range you kind of want to hit now for me and this is again personal taste here i like to be a little bit louder i like to be negative 14 luffs you'll see some people say negative 16 negative 16 is fine um i like negative 14 just because i want it to make sure that you know, my audience is able to listen to it and hear it and not have to ride the volume slider. Okay. So negative 14 luffs, then you have your true peak. Okay. So by default, it sets it to negative one. I think that's a little loud. Okay. I set this to negative three because I I'm a, I'm a fan of adding a little bit of headroom. Okay. The rest of the stuff here is, is again, very similar to how the compressor works because this is in essence a compressor. You know, we have look ahead time and we have release time. Um, you can keep those as standard and kind of play around with it. I like this kind of setup here and all we have to do to kind of make this work is hit run and it's going to go through, it's going to take our waveform and it's going to level everything off and set it so that we are hitting that negative 14 luff range. Okay. So if we play this back now, top of the dark morning. Yes, yeah, it's been a long time coming for anybody who thinks. And that seems to be a little bit too aggressive. A little bit of news around you. For some reason it's popping on my end, but usually it doesn't do that. Um, the point is, is that you want to apply some sort of loudness maximization to your file just so it's going to be consistent across the board. Okay. Yeah, that's weird that I cut that off there. Now, once you're done with that, 
Let me actually run this one more time. A little higher than that, especially. Yep. Okay. So once you're done with that, you're going to save it. I save as, and this is where you save it to your MP3. Okay. Now, one thing I haven't talked about yet is really doing ID3 tags. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you could do ID3 tags. Okay. ID3 tags can be done inside of Libsyn. Uh, if you're inside the new episode, you can, you know, all the stuff that you're going to populate in that new episode, you can save it as the files ID3 tags. There's a little button there to do it. Um, you can also, if we open up our metadata here, create ID3 tags inside of Audition, you know? So you can add you know, album art, all those fun things can be built inside of here. And then when you save it as an MP3 file, you can include those different pieces of metadata, okay? Now, in terms of saving this thing out, I change this. I usually make this about 96 kilobits. Okay. And this is really dealing with compression. Okay. Because again, you know, uh, we, we, I think we had one person mention how, you know, you end up with a large file size and you're right. This is right here where you can control that. So in the MP3, you can choose kind of a bit rate that's going to work well for you. Um, you can choose one of these that works. I think 96 is fine for spoken word. Uh, if you really need the fidelity, you could go a lot more, but 96 is honestly fine. Hit OK. You want to make sure you're also using CBR, constant bit rate, and that ultimately will give you a nice MP3. So we'll hit OK. It's going to say, hey, this is going to be a compressed file. We know. <laughs> we know. We want it to be a compressed file. Hit Yes. And ultimately, you're going to end up with a file that is fairly small. Okay. Now, I know that that is quite a bit of stuff in <laughs> nearly two hours. So um, at this time, if anyone has any questions, you're free to throw the questions out. Does anyone have any questions about the audio editing process? I don't think we saw any come in recently. Any questions at all? Didn't see any. Okay. Well, if there aren't any questions, that's cool too. Um, again, be sure to uh, check out some of our other videos that we've got coming down the pipe, especially we have one coming up on remote recording which is definitely something that you want to pay attention to uh, using remote recording, okay? Uh, and if you like more of these types of live stream videos where we talk about editing, talk about different processes, let us know down in the comments, let us know in the chat, you know, like and subscribe to our channel because we want to do more of these. We want to do things that are definitely going to support you, the audience and podcasters so that you really get a lot out of this channel. Okay. Um, so again, I got to do, I got to do the, the standard YouTube like and subscribe. So if I can get my work in here, so be sure like subscribe, follow the channel. Uh, be sure to follow Libsyn on all platforms, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Facebook at Libsyn. Follow myself. If you want to at, at Brian Coddington. I also, uh, if you like my podcast too, you might not, if you're into movies and comedy at cinema at psycho show is my handle on all the social medias. And again, remember, keep podcasting. Again, have a good night and uh, I'll see you again.